What's up guys? Today we're at the Atari booth at PAX West 2023. I just got a little quick demo talk about their upcoming console, the 2600 Plus. I wanted to ask like some questions about basically what their target market was with this. He made a super cool comparison that I didn't really think about. He kind of compared it to modern day vinyl enthusiasts that have their old legacy collection but want to use it on new hardware. So kind of targeting everyone, almost like me, I would buy it for like a grandpa, an uncle or a dad. But if I want to try it out for myself, super accessible way for me to play the games myself. The crazy thing is they're releasing cartridges once again, which like that freaking freaked me out because I'm thinking they're just going to come out with a console that's compatible but they're also re-releasing the cartridges once again, like over 50 years later. So that's something super interesting to look at with so many people talking about how emulation is now the way to go and how these companies don't have really give you access to all this legacy titles. They're doing something completely different. So we can hear about what kind of he had to say. Sorry about that. Hey man, good to meet you. David, uh, come on in. Uh, we announced it last week. It comes out the 17th of November. Secret sauce is that it kicks out. It's your uh, Chris Digital signal. It's compatible with 2600 and 7800 cartridges. We literally are testing them one by one, just buy, buying every game we can find, testing it, going to people who have libraries, testing them. The build quality is amazing. Dimpled surface that the original had. Yeah. The, the metal toggles, let's get that satisfying click. We've been making new cartridges now for maybe a year and a half. Started off with collector's editions of rare prototypes that never got an official launch. But then we're also coming out with just standard edition cartridges that yeah. are less expensive. So the first two are berserk. And then the other game is Mr. Run and Jump, which was a game that was made two years ago. The first official new Atari 2600 game okay. since 1991. And how does that feel? Because I don't feel like that many people are doing that nowadays, making cartridges for their legacy hardware. We're probably taking it further than others. You see a lot of emulation. You have to go through a lot to start to get the old games to work. This was meant to be very affordable, accessible, very easy to use. Part of game preservation for us is accessibility. I have the original 2600 in the cartridges, yeah. but like, yeah, I find it if I want to like sit down and really play these games, it's a whole process of getting, you know, a CRT and getting the cable. So now this is something that you know, I can just plug and play really quickly and have access to all these games. That's, that's the intent. Super accessible, easy to do, really satisfying experience. The digital 8 bit is like hooks of music. And there are still people who are going to want to play on the original with the CRT. That's awesome, right? Like, you have, it's a lot like vinyl, the return of vinyl. I have a record player, but my old and I bought a new one, and I've got my old record collection, which is like the old parts of Yeah. I love listening to them. But I've started collecting new albums too, and I'm just going back from like the last 30 years of music, and like picking specific albums that I want, and then I'll get the 80 gram heavy album with the new colors, vinyl, and yeah. collector's edition. It's very similar market. People want like a really good build quality. They've got their old cartridges. When they buy the new cartridges, sometimes they get the standard, but often they want to get that special edition. So I find them very similar. You guys are like focusing on people that already have like the old legacy cartridges, but do you hope that you get new customers that are buying your newer cartridges that you're putting out slowly? We do. We do you think that that's exactly what's going to happen. Probably the first ring of, of customers will be like the really hardcore 2600 fans, the collectors, people who grew up with it. Then there's so many younger gamers who are huge fans of retro gaming, and then they're also going to check this out. I think for younger gamers who want to play the very first adventure game, play the very first platformer, play the very first this, they can do it. Plus, it's coming out in the holidays, so you'll probably see a lot of internet generational gift giving. Like for dad, dad's going to buy it for my son, you know, that kind of stuff. I think we'll see a fair amount of that, too. It's an emotional product for a lot of people. You know, we also published Atari 50, which was a collection of over 100 games. You can play those on your Switch and your Xbox. Oh, yeah. And other people want the cartridge. You know, however you want to access the game, the most important thing for us is just that yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Not at all. It's played the game. Yeah. Right. We are. Like, you dab on. Thumbnail shot.